So how's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> so my name is Lauren Rechterman, and I thank you sincerely for giving me the opportunity to tell you not only a little bit about myself, but a piece of the story behind the inspiration for my new company, Almighty One Athletics, and my testimony with God, one of which comes from the bottom of my heart. So before I get started, I want to ask you all a question. It's four words and quite simple. Why are you here? Why are you here? Is it because the person next to you threw you in a car and drove you here against your will? I threw those people in my car tonight. <laughs> or is it because you wanted to hear me talk? As much as I want that to be true, it's probably not. There's probably a good chance that none of you know who I was before right now. So, if you weren't forced to come here or showed up to see me, why are you here? If you still haven't come up with an answer, I think it's because you want to be inspired. You want to be part of a team of people who have a similar belief. You believe in something much bigger than you could ever imagine. You believe in God. So today, my goal is to inspire you with my testimony. And hopefully, it's something you can relate to in your own lives. So without further ado, my story. I grew up in a little square mile town in Ohio, you guys may have heard of it before, called Minster. A community of less than 3,000 people who are extremely passionate about two things, church and sports. So my parents raised me as a Catholic and an athlete while also pushing me academically. I have a younger brother and sister, and growing up, we attended our beautiful church, St. Augustine, every Sunday as a family. Overall, I was very lucky to have an amazing childhood. By the time I was a senior in high school, it came time for me to decide where I wanted to go to college. And I was dead set on going to Columbus State and attempt to earn a athletic scholarship to play basketball. I was so sure about this decision that it was the only school I applied for. That's pretty risky. So when I went on my official visit with the coach, he showed me around and I talked to some of the girls and we concluded with a meeting in his office. Me, my dad, and the head coach, um, we were sitting there and he proceeded to tell me that I would be a great addition to the team. He even said that I could be a starter. I looked over and my dad raised his eyebrow and gave me one of these and we both knew that we were liking what we were hearing. I was so excited and then he said his final comment. He waited until he had me hooked and then he broke the news that they were no longer offering athletic scholarships to recruits and they were becoming a division three college. So the first instinct I had was to walk away from the offer, but I couldn't because it was the only school I applied for. So I decided to still play at Columbus State and play on the team without an athletic scholarship. So a few weeks passed by, and then one Sunday while eating lunch with my family after church, I received a phone call from a crazy Asian man. I could barely understand a word he was saying, like it was one of those instances where he called the wrong number. I could barely understand, but somewhere in his mumbo jumbo, I got out that he was the head volleyball coach from Sinclair College, and he had a volleyball scholarship for me. When I got off the phone, I told my family, and we finished our meal, not really thinking much about it. But later on, I got a call from my best friend, Erica. She started explaining to me that she got offered a scholarship from a Chinese man that she could barely understand. <laughs> now, she was also dead set on attending another college and it was the only school that she applied for. So that was interesting. It was quite crazy because the thought of playing volleyball in college never once entered our minds. But on the same day, we got offered a scholarship to play at the same college. Our volleyball careers were pretty much a closed book because our senior season had ended weeks prior. It was as if fate brought us to that point, and it was an opportunity that we couldn't turn down. So we accepted the offer and we moved to Sinclair, got an apartment with a bunch of girls, and the next year I joined the basketball team as well. Although I had Erica and several other friends with me at school, I felt like I was exposed to a whole new world, sparking my first sense of insecurity. It was a very difficult time being surrounded by people who I appeared 
that were better than me physically with their looks, body types, flawless skin, academically, athletically, and in overall confidence. Initially, it was easy to push the negative thoughts aside, but over time, they slowly started to control me, leaving my self-confidence to almost nothing. On the outside, it was easy for me to hide, but when I was alone, I found myself binge eating and spiraling down further, which eventually drove me into making poor decisions. I knew I had to find a way to release these thoughts, so I took the advice of my roommate Meg and I began writing my thoughts and problems in a journal. I looked back at my first entry almost a year ago before preparing this for tonight. And I wanted to read a little bit to you. On August 5th, 2016, I said, Lord, I am lost. I've been struggling to find myself in the path you have laid out for me. Sometimes I find myself not loving my body like I should. Help me to love the greatest gift you have given me. Bring me closer to you so that I can inspire others. A couple months later, I wrote another journal entry. There's some positive ones mixed in there, and my life isn't all terrible. <laughs> it says, I want to change you for the better, but I cannot find a way how. Sometimes I find myself going down and preventing me from going in the right direction. I need your help, Lord. I want to bring others up so they don't feel what I do. Maybe through that, I can find strength. So after a few months of this battle going on inside me, I began to gain weight, and my acne flamed up, which I had never had problems with before. I no longer wanted to go out and socialize. I had a boyfriend at the time, and we were dating for a while. And eventually, he said those words that everybody anticipates, I love you. I did one of those things where I brushed around the subject and didn't say it back. And a few days later, I was blindsiding him and breaking up with him because I couldn't let him love me. I couldn't let him love me when I didn't love myself. In the meantime, my sister was getting super fit. Everybody was raving how good she looked. And I wanted to look like her because the last thing I wanted was for people to talk about me gaining weight. <laughs> Whenever I would try to find clothes to wear, she always mentioned that in her closet, everything would be too small for me. I was always too big or it would never fit me. If something ever did fit, I would always get criticized not to stretch it out. It was the truth, but it always hurt. Even though she didn't mean to put me down like that. So, I went out and I found a 12-week workout program and began exercising. My first workout was terrible. I could barely get through it, and I became very discouraged and lost faith. I was ready to give up on myself once again. I didn't trust my own strength, so I began offering my struggles to God, and then something amazing happened. I felt stronger, and before I knew it, I completed the workout. So I continued this pattern of when I felt pain, I offered it to God, and eventually I began seeing small improvements. I recently completed my collegiate career on the volleyball and basketball court at Sinclair and received an associate degree in business. And after school ended, I moved back home to Minster and I got a paid internship at the Dan and Yogurt Corporation while continuing my college education. Um, after a few weeks of being on the job, a lot of my friends and family would occasionally ask me if I liked it. And I always said yes without hesitation because it paid well. There was minimal stress, my coworkers were nice, and of course I received the benefit of free yogurt. And I love free stuff. <laughs> so on the outside, I was in an ideal situation that a lot of people would die to have. But on the inside, I was conflicted. Although I agree it would make for an outstanding career, I really wasn't certain that it was something I could do passionately for the rest of my life. Deep down, I desired more but I didn't know what that more was. In deep reflection, I considered my passions in life and I could narrow it down to four things. Those are business, athletics, art, and of course, my faith. I worked as a barista in Starbucks at college and I used to draw those promotional signs that you'd see in front of the counter. And customers and my coworkers would occasionally ask me like, why I wasn't considering a career in art, just as my friends did when I show them drawings from this journal. 
but I didn't feel that a career in art was for me, so I quickly dismissed their suggestions. And although I love sports, I felt since my playing career was over, the only aspect I had left in that regard was working out recreationally. So I was truly in an emotional turmoil. So I kept offering my workouts to God. One Sunday, I was fully engaged in one of my therapeutic runs to the cemetery. A ritual, a ritual I began following the death of my good friend Austin when I was a senior in high school. Anytime I felt stressed or buried in my problems, I ran to the cemetery to pray at Austin and as well as my grandfather's graves. Anytime I rested near my grandfather's grave, I couldn't help but let my mind drift back to the rec league basketball courts. I could just close my eyes and see my grandpa cheering me on from the stands. My grandpa followed our basketball team like it was his job, and soon he became like the grandpa to everybody else on the team. My grandpa passed away unexpectedly in a car accident in December of 2008. And when I returned to the basketball team, I noticed they were all wearing these little black patches on their chest. And when I looked close, I saw that it was the initials of my grandpa with a cross. And for the first time, I found myself playing with so much more passion and purpose, all for God and for my grandpa. I truly owe him for shaping me into a better player and teaching me to do more than just play a game. On that particular Sunday, when I finished praying and reflecting with my grandpa, I made my way across the grassy field to my friend Austin. Austin was an amazing college-bound golfer and an avid fisherman. But most important, he was a man of undeniable humility. At Sinclair, I dedicated my games to him by writing his initials on my shoes. There was just no doubt in my mind that he would have been successful in anything he would have done in life. And here I was feeling like a complete mess. I fell to my knees in front of his stone with my hands held together tightly and tears were streaming down my cheeks. I was overcome with that lost feeling once again. I bowed my head and I vulnerably opened my heart to God. The feeling was just certainly way too much to overcome on my own. I started pouring out all my problems to God, every insecurity, doubt, and the fact that I was just completely lost as to what I wanted to do with my life. Finally, I asked God, please show me what my calling is. I want to make a difference. What happened next is almost unexplainable. I felt this light pressure on my heart, like a hand was resting on it. And it was in this point where I felt so still. I zoned out, as you would say, but suddenly I came back into one of those aha moments. In that instant, I knew God was telling me to do something outlandish to steer my head and my heart right. He asked me to create this, this being an opportunity to steer all my greatest passions into one, to create a Christian athletic clothing line, a Christian athletic clothing line. In some crazy way, it all made total sense. My four passions, business, athletics, art, and faith all somehow came together. My tears of sadness transformed to tears of understanding and joy. And I, looking back at every struggle, I realized everything I'd gone through was leading me up to that very point. My mindset of months on end changed in a matter of seconds, and I was completely mind blown into what God had just done to me. Once I gathered myself together, I ran out of the cemetery home with a feeling invincible with a whole new strength. It was a feeling that I wish everybody could experience. From that moment, I've been inspired to create Almighty One Athletics. I continue offering every one of my workouts to God or people struggling. And now I'm watching my body transform into something I never experienced in the past. I'm starting to gain my self-confidence back, an aspect I truly thought would never happen. Looking back at my journey, I wanted to take a piece of it and use it on my first shirt design. I put the quote, offer it up on the back of my shirt. It means so much to me and I want to help everybody offer their struggles up to God. So I developed the name Almighty One Athletics from a Bible verse in the book of Revelation 1.8, which reads, I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and ending, said the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. 
I feel it truly captures my relationship with God, sports, and life in general. I now look at the person I've become, who I am, and it signifies a turning point in my life while taking this huge risk. Starting a business as a 20-year-old while also taking chances against 95% odds that new businesses fail. This percentage may seem crazy to you guys, but I am so blinded by passion and my faith in God that those odds never once brought me fear. The person I was struggled and was lost, which brings me to who is to come. I feel like no matter what comes at me now, I will never truly fail with God by my side. Revelation 1.8, I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and ending, said the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. In Greek, Alpha means beginning and Omega means ending. So God is with us in the past, present, and future. My goal with Almighty One Athletics is not just to sell some nice quality apparel, but to give people the feeling of passion and purpose and to follow their heart and what they love. I want to give people hope and encourage them to offer up their struggles to God. Almighty One is authentic and will allow people to present their faith to others and provide them an opportunity to spread God's word and build teams of people who share similar beliefs. Sports are so much more than just a game. And I want to thank my grandpa in Austin for helping me realize that. So even if I touch only one person going through any similar struggles I went through, it's worth it to me crying up here in front of all of you guys. Um, I came across an awesome quote by Steve Jobs, which I'll never forget. And I'm going to share it with you all. This is the part where I'll inspire you. It's people with passion can change the world for the better. And the people that are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that do. I have crazy amounts of passion inside me showing me that I can make a difference. And if you're still listening to me talk, you may hold that same desire. I've already received so much support from people. And now I'm pouring my heart and soul into Almighty One Athletics to help people gain some more inner strength. Another goal I have is to take a percentage of my profit and donate it to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA. The reason I got really close to my friend Austin was through a group similar to this. Therefore, I want to give to this organization so others have the opportunity to come together and develop relationships with each other and the Almighty One above. I've not officially launched my line yet, but I have created a Facebook and Instagram page with the same usernames, Almighty One Athletics. I'm so excited to live out this dream. So whatever it is in your heads right now that you want to do, I'm here to inspire you to align your passion with purpose. You have what it takes. You just have to go out and do it. If you're unsure what God's plan is for you, don't give up. Ask him, why am I here? Be careful, though, because you might just get the answer. I sincerely thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for listening to my testimony and Andy Lynch for inviting me here. I also want to thank everybody who helped me get to this point in my life. It is my desire that you will see more things coming from Almighty One Athletics someday soon. God bless.